Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs, and today we're making one of my most popular items. It is my sparkly hand painted dandelion coasters. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to add some pigmented resin in a thin layer on the bottom of our coaster molds. So, I'm only going to be adding about one ounce to one and a half ounces per mold. So, that would mean I would need about two ounces to three ounces mixed um, for both at this point. So, once we get those mixed up, I'm going to put about two thirds of the clear resin into some uh, fuchsia pink pigment powder, and then the rest will go into some fuchsia glitter. So this, and once we get those mixed up, we'll be able to pour them into our molds. So we just want to get, uh, you know, a layer that looks a little bit glittery, but mostly just pigment and uh, it gives really nice finish so we'll go ahead and get those mixed up and then we'll move on to the next step okay so we have our pigment mixed up here so we'll put half of it into the top mold and the other half into the bottom mold and we will do the same thing with the glitter as well then once we have all that poured in we'll go ahead and heat it with the heat gun and do a bit of blending just so we get a nice mix of these uh, fuchsia colors together and uh, once that's done we'll let it sit to set overnight and then uh, we will move on to the next step for painting The next step is talking about how we're going to paint the designs on our coasters. So I have a pre-recorded piece from last year in 2020 that I explained some alternatives. So we're going to go into that clip and then I'll see you on the other side. Okay guys, so let's talk about how to draw on your resin. So once your resin is cured, you can use one of these products to actually draw the dandelion design on your coasters. I have my preferred product for this, but I wanted to give you guys some options because what I realized over the last couple of months with the pandemic is that it was becoming increasingly difficult to find the product that I normally use. And I wanted to give you guys options and alternatives just in case you weren't able to find um, my recommended product. So. <clears throat> So before I was a resin artist, I actually used to draw on ceramics and glass, and I used to use this product here. It's called a Vitria, it's by Pebio, it's called Vitria 160, and it's specifically for glass. Um, the way this works is you would draw on the glass of the ceramics, and then you would bake the item for about 30 to 40 minutes, and that would set the paint onto it, so then it becomes washable, very durable, and um, it's just very specific for that use, but I really enjoyed working with this outliner. So I wanted to see if it would work with resin and obviously I wouldn't be able to bake the resin, but I figured that maybe if I was able to um, put a clear layer on top, then that would seal it in. And luckily for me, it does work. So again, I'm sure you're familiar with how this looks, but that is how that looks. Um, the second alternative I came up with was trying to use an acrylic paint such as Deco, this Deco Art Extreme Sheen Pearl, um, which has a similar coloring as the Vitria Pearl. But um, what I was finding when I tried to use it all by itself is that the paint was a little bit too thin, like the viscosity of it was too thin. So you'll see how that turned out on this test piece here. Um, just the, it's just over, just a little bit too runny. So what was happening is that you weren't getting those sharp, um, distinctive design lines in here. It was just kind of all really soft and kind of mushy looking. So wasn't great. But what I just, what I tried after that is I actually mixed a little bit of this Liquitex liquid thick thickening gel to the, um, the deco art. And like I said, not a lot, very little. And what it does is it just thickens it up just enough so that it's perfect to be put into one of these 
precision applicator bottles and then you can just pipe it out just like you would if you were doing henna or again something similar to this so um, I'll show you what it looks like once. So this applicator bottle is very common for henna artists. It's also used for many other types of mediums. Um, you can find it at most craft stores, hobby stores, or even on Amazon. So I'll just show you how that looks. So it just pipes out just like that. And I'll show you as well in comparison to the vitria. So there you can see it. It's very, they're very similar, a little bit different in coloring, but very, very, very similar. So, so that was the two options that I think are the best. Um, if you're not able to, sorry, let me actually show you the coaster with it. So again, you can see it works very well. Um, now, if you're not able to find either of these two options, then, and you need a very kind of you know, simple option that maybe doesn't require any mixing or something maybe you already have. Um, you could definitely just go straight to just a, you know, a simple matte acrylic color. Um, so this one here is called Basics by Liquitex. So um, I didn't mix this one. It actually, I, I actually did actually, sorry, I did mix it. I put, I took the titanium white and I tried to make it pearl. I took some pearl, um, pigment paste, sorry, pigment powder, and I tried to mix it to get that pearl sheen. Um, the titanium white wasn't having it, so basically it just sucked up all that pigment powder and still looked super white <laughs> when it was done. So I'll show you what that looks like here. So you can see it doesn't have that pearlescence to it. It's more of a flat white, but it does have a similar look. So like I said, in, if you can't find any other products, this one works just as well in terms of holding up its shape and getting the design done for you. It just doesn't have that pearlescence to it. And maybe if you do find um, a brand similar to this that does have a pearl a pearlescent color, um, that might work just fine as well. I wasn't able to find any um, just kind of, you know, rummaging around um, so what I have in stock here. So um, I use this and I think it worked just fine as a, you know, quote unquote, basic option. Um, and again, I just put that inside one of these precision applicators that has the metal tip and then I um, just piped it through. So again, use my needle to, I guess, so the great one thing about these applicator tips is sometimes they do get a little bit clogged. They do come with these pins, so you can just kind of clear it out quickly. And then, again, piping along. So there you go. So you can see how much whiter that is than the pearl. So again, it can definitely work depending on the design you're looking for or just what you have available to you. There you go. So those are the three options. Um, hopefully between these three, you can find um, something that works for you. Okay, so we're ready to get painting. So I'm going to be using my Pebio outliner and the first thing I'll do is find the center of my coaster and draw a circle. This will be the center of our dandelion and then I will draw a stem coming from the edge of the coaster to the middle. And as mentioned in the uh, clip previous, it does take a little bit of time to get used to how to, you know, press and add pressure to these tubes in order to get the flow that you want because you can um, have the paint come out in a more thin line or heavier depending on the pressure that you're putting. It does take a bit of time but um, with practice it will become much easier. So we'll run into a time lapse here and I will see you after we get the dandelion fully painted on.
Okay, so we've painted our dandelion and we've let it set for about an hour or so. That's how long we need to let it dry. The next step is to be adding the center and I'm going to be using this Liquitex gloss varnish. Um, the main thing you want to make sure with your gloss varnish is that it dries completely clear. You don't want anything that's semi-transparent or somewhat opaque. So um, the Liquitex seems to work really well for that. So we'll go ahead and we will put a little bit of that into the cup. The one thing we want to remember specifically with the Liquitex is if it's too thick, the actual amount of gloss that you're using, it will crack. So we don't want it to be too thick. We want to use just enough that what we're going to need for the center. So we'll pour a little bit into the cup and then make the center of our dandelion, which in this case will be a circle to cover up that white area that we left in the middle. And then we'll leave that to dry for about five or six hours uh, to get that center dried. And then we're ready to add our top coat. So the same amount as before, we're adding, you know, two to three ounces for both of these coasters. So about one to one and a half ounces per coaster. We'll lay that on top. We'll use our heat gun to get the bubbles out and let it sit overnight. And then we'll unmold them in the morning. Okay, so here's our final result. Unfortunately, I don't have the unmolding video from 2020 when I originally made this tutorial. But as you can see, this is the final result. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have made these coasters in pretty much almost any color possible. So I've had many customer requests for these. So, and then you can also finish them with gold edges or leave them clear as you see here. Um, if you're interested in knowing how to add the gold edges, I will link that video at the end of this video. And uh, I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to uh, let me know in the comments and like and subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.